Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're doing well. I thought that I would record another video where I build something from scratch using the, the new responsive engine. And I decided to do something simpler this time. So we're going to build this register page right here from scratch. I found this on Dribble. I guess it was made a few years ago. So shout out to Daniel who created it, but we're going to build this. It'll be a full width page. We're also going to scale it down to see what it might look like on mobile. But we'll start with this desktop view with this section on the left with this image inside and then this form on the right here. And when I was trying to go through and build this last night, I ran into an issue that we'll, we'll run into again at the end when trying to scale this down to mobile. And I think it's something that, I mean, at the time you're watching this, if it's if it's well into the future, it will likely be something that Bubble has resolved already in terms of how things scale down to mobile in the new responsive engine. But I thought uh, it would be an interesting one to explore while we walk through this video. But anyways, we'll get to that at the end. It has something to do with how these inputs start to scale down. Let's go into the Bubble editor here. I've created a brand new page called Create Account. And as always, we're going to upgrade to the new responsive engine. And I'm going to start by changing my page width here to 1280 pixels. It's like we did last time too. Let's start by looking at what we're trying to build and trying to kind of break it down into the different components that, that we'll need. So when I look at this page, we clearly have two different sections here. So I see one row and two different sections inside of this row. There's a section on the left that's looks like it's taking up about maybe like 40, 45% of the screen right here. And then we have this form on the right side. So looking at this, thinking about the layout, thinking in terms of columns and rows, which this new responsive engine seems to force you to do, I'm going to go into the editor here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the layout of the page from fixed to a row right here. OK, now let's start by creating this left section that we saw in the demo, that, that pink color. So we'll take a group and drag this onto the page. By default, it's going to snap into the top left corner because the page layout we switched to row. So first things first, just so we can see what this, this group looks like, why don't we go and grab the hex color of this pink right here. And I'm using, I don't know if I mentioned this in my last video, but I use this Chrome extension called, I think it's called Colorzilla. Yeah, Colorzilla, which is fantastic. It allows you to, it gives you this color dropper inside of Chrome here. And if you're using Chrome, any page that you're on, you can use this extension to find whatever hex code you want to find. So I just use that to copy that hex code. We're going to go to appearance here and let's remove the style and give this group a background style and change the color to this pink. Okay. Now we want, obviously we want this group right here to stretch all the way. We want it to be 100% of the height of the viewport. So I'm going to go into layout here. I'm going to change the container layout. I mean, we, we don't need to do this to make it stretch right now. You can see that because the parent container, which is the page right now, right? Because the parent container is a row, I can make this stretch vertically like this. So I'm going to click stretch vertically, but we have this fixed right now. So maybe we actually do need to change this. And again, uh, just, just kind of as a side note here, observing what has been happening over the past week and just how um, the Bubble team is handling new feature requests and different, different bugs that people are finding with this responsive engine, it seems like a lot of the controls and a lot of the ways that, um, like the default behavior of, of the property editor here as you're laying stuff out on the page, it seems like that's going to change. Maybe by the time you're watching this video, it, it already has changed. But for now, there are a few things that seem a little bit off while we're going through through beta here. But let's change the container layout to a row. And the second that I do do that, we can see that it, it stretches out vertically. OK, so, so far, so good. Now, inside of this group, 
Why don't we just preview our app too to see where we're at? Okay, and we'll get rid of this debugger. And there we go. We have this full width group on the left. And inside of this group, let's call this group left container, we're going to have this image right here that's going to be centered vertically, it looks like also horizontally. Um, I'm not going to use this exact image just because I don't know where it is, but I'm going to use a different image in place that I think will still look okay. And I've already downloaded that image. So we'll take an image element, drag it inside of this group, and let's make this a static image. And where did I put that image? It's in downloads. There we go. Okay, so we'll use this image. And of course, I want this to be centered in the middle of this group and also vertically as well. So we'll go to layout and let's take a look at what's happening here. I've been using this keep element aspect ratio fixed. And I think this is a nice feature. Um, if you know the aspect ratio, in this case, I think one to one works, works fine. This looks pretty good. Um, if you know the aspect ratio of your image, then this is a great feature. And then you can figure out the aspect ratio of your, your image too. There are a bunch of different tools to do that. We won't look at, at any of that right now. But this looks pretty good. I want to center it, of course, in relation to its parent, which is this group right here. This group is a row. And I want to center this image vertically in the row. So I'm going to click here. And what we can do too is if I click on the parent group left container, I can define how its children will be centered, right? So the container alignment, I want to set this to, I want to set this to be centered so that this image is centered in relation to its parent, right? And now we have this image that's nicely centered. Um, if I click here, we can make this fixed width. I think this looks, this looks fine for now. Um, let's see if we run into any issues with a fixed width image later. But as of right now, if I preview the page, so far so good. We have this nicely centered image. Okay. And same with this. Right now, this group left container is fixed width at 495. That was kind of the, the default behavior. Um, I'm going to change this because I don't want this to be fixed width. If I stretch the page out, I want this to actually be kind of a percentage of the width of the page. Um, looking back at this, this looks like it's about 40%, I would guess. That's what we're going to go with of the, the page width. And that way, if we're on a much wider screen, it will have that opportunity to stretch to whatever 40% of that page width is, which is nice. That's what we want. So let's go back to the editor here. We'll say, I'm going to uncheck this. You can see the second that I uncheck it too, that this group instantly tries to take up as much space as it can inside of its inside of its container, and it stretches all the way to the right. But what I'll do is we'll set let's set the min width to nothing right now, but we will set a max width, and that max width will be a percentage of the container. Max width we're going to set to forty percent. There we go. And this snaps back into place. And if I look at this preview, we should, I think, see this get a little bit bigger too. Yeah, there we go. So it's slightly, slightly wider, which is what we want. All right. So I think this is good for the left container here. And let's deal with this form on the right. So the way that I want to handle this is I'm going to create a group. And notice how when I drag a group onto the page right beside this group left container here, group B, the one that I just created, snaps to the left because we've set the page to be a row and the container alignment is set to be left aligned. So all of the different children of this page are going to be snapping to the left. Right now we have two children on that first hierarchy level. All right, so group A, or sorry, group B here, Let's not make this fixed as well. I'm going to make this a row. And we'll call this group right container. Now this, I also want to stretch all the way to the bottom. 
of the page to fill the viewport height. And I don't want this to be fixed width at all. I want this to uncheck this and it's going to take up the rest of the remaining room inside of this row here, which is good. Sorry about that. Let me, I thought my phone was on silent mode. I think it is, but it's still vibrating. Anyways, let's take a group and this group we'll use to start building out the actual form components here. So I'm going to have one group, the one that I created first, group right container, that will basically fill this remaining space here. And then I'm going to have another group around all of these form components here that will group these together. So let's call this group uh, form container. And the container layout of this, why don't we set this to be a column? And the reason it's going to be a column is because we have a, you know, a text element up here. We have some subtext here and then some inputs, right? But you can see, if you think about this in terms of columns, like all of these are stacked on top of each other. So that's what we want. That's how we want this group form container that we just created to behave. All of the elements here will stack on top of each other. So just to illustrate this quickly, if I take a button and I drag this here and then I create, take an icon, it's going to snap underneath it like that. And every element that I drag onto the inside of this group will behave just like that. Okay. So let's start with the text element. That will be the title of this form. And I've created some styles already to save time so that we don't have to spend time styling the text to look nice. Um, I think, yeah, there we go. Book club title. And this is welcome to book club. No capital. Sorry about that. Still working with this setup here. All right, give me one sec. I'm just going to pause this video and figure that out. Okay. Welcome to book club. Now let's... Right now, the second that I dragged that text element onto the screen, it kind of just set its minimum height to whatever I, I dragged onto the screen there, which was 61 pixels. I don't really want this to have a minimum height or a fixed width at all. So let's uncheck this. I'm going to delete the minimum width so that the container of this text element just fits whatever space it needs or fits to whatever width it needs. And we'll get rid of this minimum height. There we go. Now let's copy this text element and we'll change the style of this because this is just going to be this subtext down here. So get instant access to the key takeaways. Say get instant access to the key takeaways. The world's most influential books ever written. are guaranteed to change your life. Sounds like a good deal. All right. We'll worry about the spacing and stuff like that later. Obviously, we can see that this group that we're building the form inside of is, is centered. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But first, what I want to do is just get all of the elements inside of this group. So next, after this, we have these two text elements here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create another group just for these inputs here. So let's take a group. We'll drag it onto the page. And for the layout here, let's also set the children of this group to behave as a column. So I'm going to have, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create an input for first name, so we'll have a label and an input that will be grouped together. And then another label and an input here that will be grouped together. And we'll group these two groups together. We're going to have lots of groups. It'll make more sense once we actually go through and do it. But we're going to also have one parent group around all of these inputs 
And that parent group is going to be set to a column layout so that all of the children just kind of stack on top of each other the same way that we've been seeing inside of this form container right here. So let's call this group input container. We'll set this container layout to be a column. And then inside of here, what we'll do is we'll create another group. And I'll call this group first and last name. Okay. So for now, let's take a in, inside of this group, inside a group first and last name, because this group is going to hold both of these, this label and this input and this label and this input, I want this group to actually behave as a row. That's what I want the layout style to be. So we're going to change this from container layout to from fixed to row. And what we'll say is we don't want this to have a fixed width. So I'm going to uncheck this and I want this the horizontal alignment here, I want this container to stretch all the way to whatever it can here, all the way to the end. Same with this group, actually, right? So let's get rid of this, make this element fixed width. We'll get rid of the minimum width, and I'm going to force it to stretch all the way to the end of its container here, right? We'll say same with group first and last name. There we go. Now, inside of group first and last name, let's take a text element. This will be the label of the input. So the style I've created is book club label. And we'll create an input as well. And I'm going to set the, let's change a few things. We don't need a placeholder here. And we'll set the actual, we're, we're gonna set a fixed height for this input. Not a fixed width, but a fixed height. So let's uncheck this fixed width. You can see that this input stretches across the page and we'll set the fixed height to be 50 pixels. Okay. Now, we want, obviously, we want this label to be on top of this input. But right now, the reason that it's, it's not, the reason that it's behaving like this is because the container layout right here for group first and last name is a row, right? So these elements are trying to fit the space that's available to them on this single row that they're they're part of. Now, what I want to actually do is create two more groups for both of these inputs. So label first name and this input are going to be in a group together called group first name. And that group that they're going to be in, I'm going to set the container layout to be a column so that they stack on top of each other nicely like this. So we'll go back to the editor here. And I'm going to I'm going to uh, group them together. So we'll select both. I'm going to say group elements in a group. Now let's rename this group to be group first name. And like we said, the container layout here is going to be a column. So you can see that they stack on top of each other nicely like this. Okay, and. Let's change this first of all to say first name. Let's get rid of this minimum height here. And the way that I, the way that I seem to be approaching this, like my preferred way of, of using this design is to not deal with these minimum heights, which as of right now, at the time I'm recording this bubble, whenever you kind of, whenever you drag an element onto the page, it seems like it will using the new in the new responsive engine, it'll give that element, whatever minimum height, the value of whatever you, you created that element at. So if I drag, for example, a text element and make it this big and let go, you can see that its minimum height is already set to whatever I just created it at, which is kind of a, a weird way of doing it. I think that's probably going to change in the future. But the way that I like to handle this stuff is I like to set the minimum height to zero so that the container fits what, whatever height it needs to fit. And then we can use a little bit of margin here to actually create the spacing that we want. So if I look at the original design, you can see that there's a, a decent amount of spacing between first name and the actual input that we're using here. So I'm going to set a bottom margin here, let's just say of four pixels. And that's that's good enough for now. Okay, so we've got this group first name 
which is a column, and that's that's perfect. We want this input to stretch out all the way to fit its container here. So again, I'm going to uncheck make this element fixed width. We're going to set the minimum width of this to zero now, and we'll come back and look at this later. But we're going to force this input to stretch all the way across to take up as much horizontal space as it can so that it fits its container like that. Okay. And fixed height of 50, that's perfect. Now we have this group first name. Let's, let's take a look at this in the elements tree. I think it'll be easier to, to see everything that way. So group first name is inside of group first and last name here, right? And what we want to do, group and first, group first and last name, this is set to be a row. So if I take group first name and I copy and paste it, what we'll have is group another group inside of here, and they will try to compete to take up space inside of this group and first la, group first and last name on the row. I probably explained that poorly. It'll make more sense once we uh, once we actually look at it here. But let's give this a try. So I'm going to click on group first name, and we'll say just because of how it's it's laid out right now, it's kind of tricky to grab the parent group here. So I'll just say edit copy. And I'll click on group first and last name. We'll say edit, paste. Okay. Now group first and last name, we've set to be a row. And it looks like this copied over correctly. So let's change this to group last name. And we'll change this to say last name. And what we'll do I'm not sure right now why this jumped to the bottom here, but my where my head is going is it jumped to the bottom because we have some feature that's preventing, there's just not enough space to be on this first line of the row. So let's see if that's the case. If I click on this group right here and look at the layout, that's why right here. So we can see group first name, and because we just copied and pasted this group last name as well, we can see that the minimum width right here, or this is set to fixed width right now, and it's set to a fixed width of 673 pixels, so it's always going to try to be that width. But if I uncheck this, and I get rid of this minimum width, there you go. We can see that it's taking up no space at all right now, um, which we don't want. We want it to look better than it does right now, obviously. So let's hide this, and we'll do the same for group last name. We're going to say, don't make this fixed width. And we'll get rid of this minimum width. And what I think will happen here is both group first name and last name will split 50% of the space inside of this parent group first and last name right here. Let's see if that's true. There we go. So yes, that's true. And if I unhide this, we can see that they're taking up just as much space inside of that, inside of that row. So that looks great. Um, what I want to do here is put a little bit of margin between these two. So for this group first name, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to set 16 pixels of margin to the right. And same with group last name, but only to the left here. Okay. And now, look, we have this nice group first and last name. And we can just zoom out a bit again and copy this input into this group input container. So copy this group. And what do I want to do? The next thing that I want to do is let, let's first of all, just give a little bit of, of uh, margin in between these two groups here. So we'll say maybe, I don't know, 20 pixels, the top for group first and last name copy. Let's change this to group email address. group email. And obviously inside of here, I don't need two inputs. I can just have one input. So this, as soon as I do that, notice what happens with this other input that's left. Again, it's trying to take up as much space as it can. And the reason that it's not stretching all the way to the right here is because we've given it a little bit of margin on the right here. So let's delete that in this case so that it stretches all the way to fit its content. 
and I'm going to change first name to email address. Okay. Next, let's copy and paste this one more time. And what we can do is because this group, actually it's right here, because group input container, its layout style is a column, these different groups here are behaving, they're, 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 they're in order, right? So we have this first group here, that's the first, in the, the, first, the first row in the column, and then the second and third and so on. So if I click on this and I wanna move it below email address here, what I can do is I can select it and I can say, make last. This will make it the last group in this, in this column. Let's also give this a little bit of margin here. So we'll say 16 pixels. And we'll change this to be, I think it's password and confirm password, yeah. Password, confirm password. Okay, now this obviously we don't want this. We, Again, if you look at all of these text elements, actually, they're behaving like this. And this is just right now a consequence of the way that Bubbles property editor works. So I don't really want any of these to be fixed width, which they all are right now. So let's uncheck this. We'll get rid of this minimum width too for all of these, even though for these ones, it doesn't really, I don't think it would really matter if we left these unchanged, but just to be consistent, Let's get rid of the fixed width and the minimum width so that the container, the text element, just fits whatever fits to whatever width it needs to fit to. And the second I uncheck that, look, it, it, it expands as needed. Okay, so our form is starting to look pretty good, minus some of the spacing issues up here that we'll deal with. Um, let's drag a checkbox here. And I'm not going to write out all of that text because who cares? Just say, do you agree to our terms of service? And again, let's uncheck the fixed width here so that it stretches to whatever space it needs to stretch to. And we'll give it a little bit of padding as well. Let's say 20 pixels from the top of this form container here. And all we have left is this button and then this text element on the bottom. So we'll grab a button. I have a style created for this button, uh, book club, there we go. And we'll set this to be a fixed height. And I think this can be just actually fixed width as well. So we'll say create account. Make this a little bit wider. Why don't we say 200 pixels? And the fixed height, I want this height to be the same as my input height. And I think the input height was 50. So let's do that. We'll also give a little bit of margin here. And let's copy a text element from the top. I'm just going to copy and paste this. And with this selected, I'm going to click Make Last so that it moves it to the bottom of this, of this column. And we'll change this text to say, already have an account, log in. And why don't we give this a little bit of margin as well? So we'll say 20 pixels and we'll change the color of this text. Why not? Just to be this purple too. So we'll go up to the appearance, go to the rich text editor. Let's give this a color and I'll copy the hex code of this button here. And paste it to right here. Okay. Awesome. So this is looking pretty good. If we click on preview right now, we have what we need for the form components here. Let's work on the spacing up top here, and then let's actually start positioning everything where we want it to be. Okay, so 
Uh, let's see, if we look at the original here, it looks like there's quite a bit of room to breathe with this design, which is nice between these, these text elements. So we'll say maybe, um, let's add some margin here too. Why don't we do this actually? We'll click on this subtext here and let's add maybe 24 from the top and 24 from the bottom. And I think that looks that looks decent for now. So let's let's deal with this actual position, the positioning of this group now. And what we've said, let's take a moment to look at the parent again. So this parent is really just taking up the rest of the space in the row that it's in, right? And this parent group right container, if we look at the elements tree, group right container and group left container are the two main children of this page create account right here. Left container is taking up a maximum width of 40% of the row and group right container will take up the remaining 60% because we, we haven't set a, a maximum width for it and it's just gonna stretch to fit that. Now, what do I want? How do I want this first child group of group right container? Let's minimize this. How do I want group form container to behave? One thing that we can do that I think is, is pretty cool is first of all, I want to, I want to position this in the vertical center of the page. Okay. We can see that if we look at this, this looks like it's centered vertically, this entire group here. So we'll do that first. And now if I click on this right here, group right container, I can also say that I want this, that the children of this group, so group right container, the children of this group are gonna behave in a row and I want that row to be centered. So the, the second that I click on that, this group form container, because it's the only child of group right container, sits in the center like that. Okay. Now the actual width of this group form container, I'm going to set this to fixed width, but I'm not going to send it to a, a pixel number. Instead, what I'm going to set it to is a percentage and not 673%. That would be a disaster. Let's set it to 80%. What this is going to do is I, I love how we can set a fixed width to a percentage now because this is going to stretch or um, reduce in width to 80% of its container, of its parent container, which is this group right container right over here, right? So this will be 80% of whatever its parent is, which is super cool. Now, like if I preview this, we can see that I'm on a, right now I've set the page to be 1280 pixels in the editor but the browser that I'm looking on is, is wider than um, 1,280 pixels, of course. And we can see that things start to stretch out really nicely, at least in my opinion, really nicely in proportion to how wide my browser is. And if we're on a super wide browser, let's just click inspect here for a second and go into responsive mode here. So let's try like a 14, like, so right now we're, we're looking at 1,440 pixels. And we still get this really nice distribution of space, right? Like this still looks really good on a wider laptop. Everything's kind of stretching out nicely in proportion to each other. And I, I just love this. I mean, I, you could do this, I guess, with the old responsive engine too, but it just feels much more predictable and, and clean with, with the new responsive engine. So I love the way that this, this functions. And I love being able to set a percentage as a fixed width here. Um, so I think that looks good. I think we can... We can say that um, everything looks great on desktop, but if I go into responsive mode now and I try to shrink this down, we have to deal with this right there. Okay, so first things first, we can see that this image, right, this fixed width of this image is, is no good. We don't want that to happen. Um, next, I think that right now the page is 1,364. And so as we start stretching this down, whoops, as we start stretching this down, right now we're at 1149. Why don't we solve this image problem first? So let's click on this. There we go. Um, and for the layout here, 
I don't want this to be fixed width. Why don't I say that I want a maximum width? Or if we just get rid of that minimum width, I think that actually looks okay as we shrink down, right? I, I do, like at, at some point here, I don't actually want this right container to be visible, right? Like maybe even right there, what I want is to hide this, or sorry, what I said right container, I meant left container. Maybe what I want is to hide this left container entirely so that this group kind of takes up the entire row, right? Um, and I, I'm not gonna worry too much about like an, a perfect design for this create account page on mobile, but what we'll do is we'll get rid of this left column, we'll collapse it, and then this group will just take up the remaining space. So let's say, maybe right about, um, let's just say like right at 1050. I'm gonna click on this group, left container, and we'll set a condition that says when the current page width is less than 1000, 1000, 1050 pixels, we'll say this element is visible and we'll leave this unchecked. And then if I go to layout here and I say collapse when hidden, what should happen, what's cool about this new way of collapsing things is that will collapse horizontal space too. We could do that using the older, the current, I guess, responsive engine, um, but it was kind of a pain to do in this responsive editor. And so let's see, if I do this and we start collapsing it, there we go. We can see that instantly the row takes up the remaining space and things start to look good, All right? All right, so we get to an issue right here and I think this is due to the minimum width of this group right here, probably. So if I double click here, uh, maybe not, sorry, maybe not this one. I think it's probably the parent group right container because this is just trying to fit, this group form container has a fixed width that is 80%. So whatever its parent width is, whatever its parent is doing, it's gonna try to fit 80% of its parent. So what I'm guessing here is that group right container, and we can see it right here, has a minimum width of 495 pixels, which we don't want. I want this to be able to shrink down to whatever. And now we'll see that this group starts to shrink down appropriately. It looks like maybe we have another group in here. Maybe my, yeah, it looks like right here, these groups inside of group form container we have to address. So let's take a look at them here. Let's take a look at the group input container first. There's no minimum width here, so that's good. Um, there is a minimum width here. So again, I assume this will be fixed very shortly in the future, the way that these minimum widths keep kind of popping up by default. But at the time I'm recording this, we just have to go through and change all of these minimum widths to allow the container to actually shrink down. And it looks like right here too. Um, maybe this input, where is that coming from? Hmm. Let's see. So we'll stretch this up, group email. There we go, it's just group email. Okay. And that should work for us. Now, here's the, the problem that I mentioned at the beginning of the, the video here. So you can see right now we're at a width of 379 pixels. So we're getting into that mobile area where we want things to look good on a phone. And what we would want to happen on a phone is for these, this first name and this last name input for them to kind of be on their own line, right? We want first name to take up all of this space. Last name would jump down in between email address and first name here, and it would be on its own line too and take up all of that space. Same with password and confirm password. When we're on desktop, this looks great, but as we shrink down, we want these to jump to the next line. So how can we do that? 
Well, I could set a minimum width for this group right here. Maybe I want the minimum width of this group to be maybe, um, let's say, I don't know, 280 pixels. Okay. And same with this group right here. We'll say minimum width of 280. Now let's, uh, let's scroll this back up to the top and watch what happens as we, as we scroll down. So, so far, so good. But you can see that once we get past 280 pixels, as this tries to, as this starts to shrink down, and we could, we could adjust this more too, so that, you know, like it jumps back to this space up here, which is fine. But once it gets past 280 pixels, we have this desired behavior that we want in the sense that this last name group is jumping down to the next line here. But notice how this spacing is, is kind of awkward too. And where is the spacing coming from? Well, it's coming from this margin that we've, we've given these two groups, right? So I was going through this last night and I was trying to think of possible solutions for this. And one thing that I tried was setting the, like, let, let's look at when the page collapses here. So let's, uh, let's go back here for a second. Let's give no minimum width. And same to this one for group last name, we'll give no minimum width so that we were just at what we were at before we started messing around with the minimum widths of these groups. So as we collapse down and get smaller and smaller, let's say like right here, maybe, just for the sake of exploring different solutions to this problem right now, let's say when the page is less than 700 pixels, what we can do is we can actually change the margin here as a condition. So if I click on group first name and I go to the conditions tab, we can say when the current page width is less than 700 pixels, then the right margin will be equal to zero. Right. And when the we'll try this here too. We'll say when the current page width is oops. When the actually sorry, I, I realized right now as I was going through that I screwed this up. What we actually want to do first is is we do want to set a minimum width on these two groups before we start playing around with the page width here. So we'll go back and we'll say the minimum width we want to be, uh, let's just say 300 pixels for now. And we'll do the same here. And as we start stretching down the page, we'll see when this begins to, to happen. So right there it's jumping down to the next page which is which is too early so let's set a lower minimum width actually why don't we try that you guys are getting me to see me try to debug this in real time but just for the sake of um getting to the heart of the issue here let's set a lower minimum width let's set it even lower we'll set it to set it to maybe 220 for now. And I think that should give us enough room to, to drop down. Okay, there we go. So we're dropping, dropping, dropping. We still have enough room that still looks good. And then at this point right here, let's look for the moment that it becomes, there we go. So right at that moment, right there, that's when we can change the condition and or set a condition to get rid of this margin right here. So if I go to the UI build, or let's go to responsive. There we go. Right at that moment, we can say when the page is less than 590 pixels, 
at that moment, we want to get rid of this margin and we want to get rid of this margin right up here. Okay. Of course, we can, we can worry about the vertical spacing later. That, that I think is actually quite easy. We can just add some margin on top of this, on top of both of these groups here, but let's worry about this horizontal, this right margin and this left margin first. So if I click on this group right here and I go to the conditional tab, we'll say when the current page width is less than 590, we'll say that the right margin is zero. And I don't know why that keeps disappearing. Here we go. So really, it, let's try one more time. And if not, we'll have to, uh, there we go. Okay. I was going to say we'll have to submit a bug report in real time in this video, but maybe not. Okay. And then here, we'll do the same thing. I'm just going to paste that condition, except instead of right margin, we'll say the left margin is equal to zero. Now, when I was doing this last night, the problem with this approach is that something like this happens. So we get everything looks good, looks good. And then once we get past that number that we set here, you can see that those margins collapse. But now because we have extra space here for a little bit of time, those inputs have, th there's no margin between them, which is not a great solution. I mean, I guess you could gamble and say, I just hope that no one is on a device that's between maybe uh, 590 and 550 pixels, but obviously that's that's not a great solution here. Um, what did it, what else did I try? So that, so that solution is not perfect. Um, I was thinking about changing the the layout of group first and last name. So the parent group, I was thinking about changing this to be aligned to parent. I didn't really explore that to the fullest, but this align to parent from what I've done so far and how I've played around with it, it has some headaches too, in terms of trying to make things respond nicely and scale down, but that, that could be a further area to explore. Um, I mean, the, the simplest way to do this, which is also the most annoying way to do this. I, I think this is too, I know this is going to be something that's fixed very soon, I think, because bubble has talked about having breakpoints to handle how certain elements behave to different, how they respond to different screen widths. So very soon, maybe at the time you're watching this already, actually, um, we're going to have something that will allow us to say when this element is at, or when the current page width is at blah, 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 then this element should be on its own line. I don't know how that interface is going to look or how that system is going to work yet because it's, it's still in the works apparently. But I think that will solve this problem here that we're dealing with. Um, another way to do it right now, if you wanted to push this and actually have this page in production, I think would just be to have, if we copy and paste this, you could have another group here. And this group could just be the group mobile group. And we could change this to be a column so that these two groups stack on top of each other. And we could get rid of the left margin as well as the right margin here. And for this entire group, I could say when the current page width is whatever, less than 500 pixels, when we're on a mobile device, show this group with the, with the um, two inputs stacked on top of each other. So that would work. It would also be really frustrating to to have those kinds of inputs. But anyways, I'd be curious to know what you guys think. Um, it was an interesting issue that I ran into yesterday and I haven't found a, a perfect solution for it yet. So let me know if you have any ideas. And yeah, I think that's about everything that I wanted to, to show you in this video. So I hope that, hope that you were able to learn something. I hope this was, this was helpful in, in one way or another. And thanks for watching. I'll see you again later. Bye-bye.